Hey guys, VBAT here with another V Plays, taking a look at the Beginner's Guide Part 6. And kind of like I did with the high altitude light fighters, I've also broken out multi rolls because there's a couple of multi roll lines that don't get any air to ground ordinance, and I feel as though it's a little bit counterintuitive that it gets the moniker multi roll because it would insinuate to you that you're supposed to be going after ground targets. But there is a series of multi roll aircraft that are built primarily for going after other aircraft. The F-94D is one that immediately comes to mind. The thing has rockets, but these are air-to-air -air rockets. They are not meant to go after ground targets at all. So you are going to be prioritizing going after other aircraft at the mid to low altitude mark. This thing's really good at being able to counter GAs since it can pump out quite a bit of damage, but has very low maneuverability. And that's kind of a trait you see for quite a few of these multi-role aircraft now another multi-line multi-line <laughs> multi-role line that comes to mind is going to be the bvps uh those are the german multi-rolls that kind of look like that batwing design everybody notes and they carry air-to-air -air rockets they have an option to carry air-to-ground ordnance, but let's be honest, they really are an air-to-air -air player everybody's going to be running those rocket loadout on those aircraft Another line that comes to mind is going to be the I-216 line. It's uh, the Soviet multi-role line that comes down that Yak-9 and the Yak-9U line that everybody knows really well. Uh, they stop getting rockets. Oh, speaking of rockets. They stop getting air-to-ground rockets at around Tier 5, and then after that point, they are strictly big cannons in the nose. So they play very much in a similar fashion. They just don't have air-to-air -air rockets, so they are priority air-to-air. -air. So with that said, this is going to emphasize the gameplay for flying against other aircraft and using the strengths of this airframe, which are going to be utilizing a high amount of speed relative maneuverability compared to GAs and heavy fighters and you're going to be doing your best to be able to counter a lot of the other airframes that are going to be operating in your envelope. So from about 5,000 feet below is where we like to sit in that tier 9. That kind of is the basis for a lot of these multi rolls. They want to sit lower but they have really strong guns once you get them on target. But with that high speed, you saw we were able to get up to about 500 miles an hour on that one pass, and it kind of plays like a pseudo heavy just at lower altitude. You note that in the how to fly heavies line that I did, or video I did, that you're gonna do an up and over turn, you're gonna use your altitude to get some more speed, and you're going to manage your energy state in order to chase down aircraft. That's one of the strengths that the, this airframe has, in fact, this is Yak-19, man. I don't know what his deal is. Don't head on rocket, guys. <laughs> Anyways, so by utilizing your speed advantage, you're going to have the edge on a lot of the aircraft operating down here. Because all your faster fighters are going to be operating at higher altitude so the fighters you'll be dealing with down here are going to be turn and burns they're going to be really fast maneuvering but they're not going to be fast in a straight line so by utilizing your speed you can take the advantage much like a heavy would but they also work really well at being able to counter heavy aircraft because with a 13 second turn time being pretty slow, it's still going to be faster than that of all of the heavies at this tier. And you also have the acceleration and speed in most cases to be able to catch up to them. In fact, a prime example here is this 262 that we are gaining on. Unfortunately, my teammates take him out, or I should say fortunately, but we didn't get the opportunity to go after him. When it comes to multi-rolls, multi-rolls, uh, they are going to be getting a lot of their points for their grade marks for being able to capture zones, but they get the latitude of capturing zones by destroying ground targets as well, which is going to come more into play when we talk about multi-rolls in a more of an air-to-ground aspect, which I'll hopefully be releasing soon. And they also get points for capturing the zone in its entirety as well as defending zones so very much like a fighter it's just that they get a little bit more latitude and being able to take out ground targets but with a counter air setup 
you aren't going to be doing that. So in a lot of ways, this is more of a how to fly, fly a medium to low altitude fighter, but... So I see that there's this heavy at high altitude and there isn't any other targets around, so I'm going to go ahead and gun up to him and see if I can take him on in order to keep our RB-17 safe. Uh, we are operating well above our engagement envelopes, so what I do is I level off the nose, because if you level off the nose, I'm not fighting gravity, and it's going to be a lot easier to let momentum carry me up underneath that aircraft once he finally makes his turn, and then I can punish him with those cannons. Earlier we went after a ground attacker before we came up here to the 262 and the firepower combined with the rockets made very short work of that GA and that's where a lot of these aircraft are going to excel because it's a relatively non-maneuvering target, it's pretty steady moving and the damage output from whatever guns you have on that multi-roll are going to be enough to be able to take it almost completely out like that aircraft right there so you'll do a lot better going after those heavily armored and very strong ground attackers compared to if, like when your turn and burn fighters try to go on them because the tail gunners will tear those aircraft apart not a bad showing uh, we didn't do great when it came to the rating system but i think we did decent enough so let's go to the post game results Taking a look at the post-game stats, you can see that the three areas that we would like to achieve our best statistics for a multi-role are going to be capture points received. Uh, this is going to be air defense aircraft, enemy aircraft, as well as ground targets. This is going to be important when we start talking about the air-to-ground multi-roles. And then sectors captured, as well as destroying while defending. So your very much like the fighter, you are going to be going in and trying to capture a zone by destroying things, and then you're going to hold that zone, and the more zones you capture, the better you you are going to do. And multi-rolls typically are pretty fast as well, despite being a medium to low altitude aircraft. As you can see, the rockets on this air-to-air -air or counter-air multi-roll are very substantial. Uh, we were able to get was it three Rocketeer kills in that match? So pretty decent result for us. Uh, and that machine gun, that Gatling cannon or Vulcan is just absolutely incredible. Uh, that allowed us to be able to do highest points on our team, but we didn't necessarily do so great when it came to the roll for our airframe. We could have captured more zones, but we we're looking more at countering the enemy players, which is what this aircraft is really good at doing. When it comes to skills, uh, the skills are going to vary, but if you're going to be running any of these counter airs, they're all going to have rockets, which means that you are going to want to prioritize getting the expert rocketeer skill, which is going to increase the likelihood of those rockets making contact with the enemy aircraft, which means that you'll have the highest chances for killing that enemy. The other skills are going to vary, but if you're going to be running any multi rolls that are involved, going to involve a cannon, uh, marksman is going to be a priority just to make sure that those cannon rounds are making contact with the target. And I also run engine guru on this aircraft, and that is also another stable for a lot of multi rolls because it's going to allow you to be able to get out of certain engagements that you don't want to be in. Since you're going to be operating at medium to low altitude, you're going to find that you're going to come up against a lot more of the turn and burn fight and it's going to be hard for you to be able to get into a turning engagement with them since you do have a pretty lengthy turn time so as a result you just want to be able to gun your way out of that engagement so that way you can come back and dictate that fight so that way you can get your guns on target a little bit easier because as you saw once you get the guns or rockets on target you're able to absolutely decimate the enemy now Granted, this thing has a 13 second turn time and a lot of people are tempted to put on maneuverability modules. I don't advocate putting on any modules that are going to compensate for a weakness. I'd rather augment the existing strengths and I think I've already made it pretty clear that I'm a big fan of engine power. So when we take a look at the equipment. I have improved radiator to get some of the boost back as well as engine tuning and combining that with engine guru will allow me to be able to get up to speed a lot faster. You saw there were quite a few situations we were able to get well over 500 miles an hour and while if you're bottom tier facing tier 10s you're probably going to have a tough time getting away but that's only particular to this airframe there are a few other 
multi-role primary counter air aircraft, uh, mostly just being the German PV, BVP line, uh, but again, very similar type of tactic, very fast aircraft, not very maneuverable, but with very strong guns, and you're going to want to play to those strengths. And some type of a sight to improve the accuracy in order to make sure that when you are able to get those guns on target, you do it very effectively. I play this aircraft and these aircraft in general very much like the way you would with a heavy. You just have a little bit more maneuverability, which means that you can counter other heavies that come down to your arena of combat fairly easily. And making sure that you have that boom capability for the boom and zoom is what's going to tip the scale. As always, guys, that's going to wrap it up, so like, favor, comment, subscribe, let me know what you like, what you didn't like, and we'll try and make these videos better in the future, and I'll catch you on the next one.